Good morning. That's the sunrise this morning. <laughs> That's the sunrise this morning. A little smile. A little smile in the cloud. That's the sunrise this morning. And it will be swallowed up. It's amazing the variety. It's quite intense. I'm not sure if it's cloud, it's haze on the horizon. And that's our sunrise. So welcome to our stroll and chat. Today is a very special day. For the whole world, for our whole Christian world, Catholic world. Wow, the sun is almost gone completely. So now we we'll just go and walk and maybe it will come out before we're finished. So here we have lots of people here in this campsite. Some people are still on the ground sleeping. Today is the 24th of June and this marks a special date because we remember somebody with an incredible mission and there's a reason for it because three days ago we had the summer solstice and since the change is not so noticeable day to day now, three days later, it is beginning to become a little noticeable. So, we're, oh, they're all buses here. Five buses of kids. What a great idea. And yesterday we were at the Montfort Crusader Castle in the middle of the woods in northern Israel, up in the mountains in the north. And there we had Bokotov. And there, I'm not dropping the, the for, just for respect for all the people here, I'm not dropping the camera here. I'm walking between huge groups of kids. Here they're just waking up. And they missed that glorious red moment. But they'll have more moments. So now here we see their buses. That's nice that the kids get out. Six buses. A lot of kids. It's great to see these programs. I worked many, many youth programs over the years, a long time ago in Central Europe, North America. And it's great to see people dedicating time to enabling young people to grow, to appreciate nature. And there's a lot of responsibility and dedication called for. And it's a beautiful, a beautiful mission. Bringing along the new generations
So the 24th of June is six months before the 24th of December. And John was conceived six months prior to Jesus. So Christians remember this for a long, long time and celebrate this day with, with um, great spiritual benefit. John the Baptist is an amazing character. Man of the desert. A desert not because the world is bad, but a place where you can be with God. Oh, here comes the sun already again. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. But we need those times when our focus can be completely on God. And John had such a message for his people 2,000 years ago. And here we see two friends walking down here. And two guys who are probably responsible for the campers. And they'll be busy all day and now they have a bit of downtime or while they're waiting for the kids to get up. We need time together to know each other, especially co-workers. It's good for them to have time together, but especially spouses who have the great responsibility of their family and also knowing them, each other better to grow deeper in their own relationship. We're looking at Tiberius here because Herod Antipas was made Tiberius capital of Galilee in the year 19. And you might remember that one of the coins we found at our synagogue was from the year 29. So it's the time of John the Baptist and John the Baptist and Herod had a good run in. John lost his head with his martyr, a martyr, a saint forever. And maybe we hope and pray that Herod had a moment of conversion. He also encountered Christ face to face. He made mockery of Christ. But while there's life, there's hope. And even somebody like that, we can pray that they can have recovered their good sense and become humble. John the Baptist is an incredible character of humility. And it's amazing, you know, when you think about that, this person that was so humble is one of the very few people whose birthday we remember liturgically. And I find that awesome, you know? He said, I have to decrease so that Christ can increase. And this is amazing because I'm going to start going back, people, because we have the schedule with the Mass at 7.15, so we're going to go back today a little bit. John stands there for somebody who doesn't look for power for themselves, who doesn't seek to be in the limelight. And yet Providence put him in the limelight because all we have is from, from above. And the text we have in Isaiah for the Mass today is, I will make you a light to the nations. On the one hand, that's the chosen people, but it's particularly of Christ, the light of the world, the light who came into the world. 
But it's also John the Baptist. And Jesus said to us, you are the light of the world. But he didn't seek to be in the limelight. That's why he went to the desert. He wanted to have the friendship with God. There's a great mystery in John's life, conception, birth. We see human resistance even in his own father. A deeply interwoven plan unfolding John the Baptist and Jesus. And then those good people at that time reading Isaiah, and especially after the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Pentecost, the ability to read the scriptures. By the way, there are a lot of scriptures there for John today. When you go into the link, you're going to have two options. An option for the Vigil Mass, which was yesterday evening, or the, the 23rd in the evening or the um, day mass, which is today. So you can ch check, I'm going to follow the ones of the day mass, okay? But they're all throwing a lot of light that's reflecting in John. And then we get to the account of his, his birth. But first of all, the psalm. I praise you for I am wonderfully made. And if there's a mystery in John's conception and birth and resistance to his coming into the world, uh, Zechariah says, you know, this can't happen, I'm too old. I don't have the ability. My wife's very old. We don't have the ability. We can't handle this. This ain't going to happen. And this is one of the big lessons of John's birth. Just like Abraham and Sarah, you know, the themes continue through the scriptures. And we need those themes so much today because we think we can do so much today. And on the other hand, we also feel very futile and think that our efforts are futile. We think we're very weak and we can't do anything, which is also false because with God, we can do a lot. We can fulfill the mission that's been entrusted to us. I'm going to go this other road here so I don't disturb the kids in there as they're getting up. And we'll still get glimpses of the, of the sunrise as we go by. I was just thinking of all the buses that typically come for pilgrims and yesterday we got good news that we have two other groups coming, a group of passages which is um, a great program from the United States bringing lots of college kids and they're coming back there, they, they're going to come here God willing very shortly. And then a group of EO, educational, educational opportunity, educational something EO. They bring, it's a Methodist based organization and they bring lots and lots of groups, not only Methodist. There you have, you can hear the chatter of all the kids. Still have these flowers in bloom here, almost at the end of June. So, Hello. Good morning. Where are you from? What? Where are you from? Modin. Modin. You want to say hello on live stream? Yes. You want to say hello? You're thirsty to say hello. So we'll let you say hello here on live stream to the whole world. Hi. Are you having a good time? Yes. You speak English very well. Where did you learn English? In school, and tell me your names, first names. Uh, I'm, I'm Julie. El, and my, I have a granddad, no, an aunt who is Julia. Julie and Ella, very good. Uh, have a wonderful, I am from heaven. <laughs> and you are, you are too. 
Ah, <laughs> but I was born in the Holy Land, Erz Kodesh, in Ireland, 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 and I live here, I work here. Okay, uh, Shalom, bye bye. goodbye, God bless you. Is this a school group? What? Say again? Scouts. Ah, ah. And are they from different schools? Ah, very good. An organization. It's not a school, it's a program for, for young people. Scouts, I know what Scouts are. Everybody knows what Scouts are. They do great work. So you're camping out at the Sea of Galilee. Yeah, very good. That's too much for me this morning. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. Very good, they're saying hello to you all there. Goodbye, God bless you. Goodbye, Julia and Ella. Here we have more Girl Scouts. So this is wonderful. The good that scouting does all over the world, when it's well led, great principles. So in the distance, way in the distance, not the hill in front of us, but behind it, you can see where we were yesterday on our vacation day. Oops, sorry. So you see the hills up there. We were up there. We traveled along those hills over almost to the coast, but not quite. And that's where Montfort is, a castle of the Crusader period. And we met a bunch of groups of Orthodox kids, like. They were all wearing their little tzitzit, their, their little strings that remind them of God's covenant. And they were hiking there, maybe three or four buses. So we prayed that all those kids around the world who are enjoying the summer in the Northern Hemisphere will be safe and blessed. So this is a nice sign here in Hebrew, Arabic, and English, and it's kind of uh, a word for us this morning. See you again. <laughs> Let me see if I can get a spot of sunlight. Here there are lots of trees here. Yeah, I think we can do a little bit here. Here we got some, some of the sunrise for you. God bless you. See you later, alligators. Come on, come on, little button.